In this episode, you'll learn the most important thing when it comes to working with Git repositories in your Java project, and that is trusting your tools, trusting your IDE. And I get it, you want to have full control over whatever your IDE is doing and what Git commands it executes, but I'll show you how to keep that full control, but also take advantage of all the cool version control features that IDEA offers. So open up IntelliJ, then choose Checkout from Version Control and Git. And by the way, I'm in no way affiliated with JetBrains. I just think the Git integration is rock solid. Then paste in any Git repository URL you want. In my case, I'm using one of my own repositories and you can either take the name that IntelliJ derived from the URL or just rename it to Git for the scared, for example. Clone the repo, open up the project, and then IntelliJ will simply open it up as a Maven project because it contains a POM file. Good. Whenever you're not in presentation mode like I am at the moment, and let me just quickly toggle that, you'll see what branch you're on in the lower right corner of IDEA. And it's the master branch. When you click that, you'll have a nice little pop up window where you'll see all your local branches, the master branch, you'll see all the remote branches on origin, that's the repository you clone from. And here you also see what remote branch the local branch corresponds to. And you can create new branches and check out tags and whatever. Now going back to presentation mode again, and what helps is to bind that tool window to a nice little keyboard shortcut so you can open it up whenever you want to like so, and then you can do the very same thing. Good, now let's get started, get our hands dirty, go to the source main Java folder and create a new Java class. And for the lack of a better class name, I'll just call it kitten. And then IntelliJ asks you, do you want to add the following file to Git? Choose no here because you want to compare the manual way of doing things with the IntelliJ way. Then maybe add a new method, public void blah. Doesn't have to do anything. Prince out blah. Now, what would you need to do to commit that file to the Git wrapper now? In the past, I've seen colleagues open up a terminal window or command line window, and you can do the same. One in IntelliJ, open up terminal window, and then you would basically do a Git status because you want to have a quick overview of what status your Git repo is in. And you'll see it's up to date with Origin Master, that's fine. But you have untracked files and it's the kitten file and also the IntelliJ IDEA folder. Now, imagine you just want to add the kitten file, so you could just do a git add source, do a git status again. You'll now see changes to be committed is the new file, the kitten file. Now you could do a git commit with a commit message, added the kitten, right? And then you can do a git push to push the change to origin. Put in my username and password, and then you're good to go. That's all good. And when you click back into the editor window, you now see that the red color is gone because IntelliJ detects it to be part of the Git repo now. But now let's do the very same thing from IntelliJ. Do a insert, add a natural predator of a kitten, which could be a fox. This time do a yes you'll see the color change to green because that signals a new file being added to the repo. And as I promised before, you want to see what's going on. So go to the version control panel and there's a, there's a couple of different tabs and there's also a console tab. And in the console tab, you see what commands, what Git commands IntelliJ executes in the background whenever you do something in the IDE. And for the Fox class, it did a Git then a add, and then when you scroll to the right, you'll see the Fox class. And there's also a couple of other parameters and don't let them scare you. They're simply there to provide better ID support. But the only things you need to know is git, add, and then the Fox class. Now, when it comes to committing, you open up the commit dialog, which is quite nice. And we'll go much more into detail on that in later episodes, especially when it comes to merging, whatever. But you'll see here the file, the Fox file. You could also choose if you had multiple files not to select it and not to commit it again, just by clicking it here. You also see the full file content here. You can add a commit message. So 
commit from IntelliJ, do a couple of other things, and then choose commit or commit and push. Let's do a commit and push. So IntelliJ committed the change in step one. In step two, we want you to confirm the push to the to origin. And you'll see it's just one commit and it's a Fox class. So let's push it. All right. So what happened in the console? When you go back, that was the last step we were at. It's the git add step. Then afterwards we had a git commit and we committed just one file. And again, it's the, the fox.java class. That's fine. So nothing happened. It's just a git add and a git commit. You'll see the output of the git commit here. That worked. One file changed. And then one step later, you did a git push. And you did the git push to origin and you push the master branch. And then you can see the output here. That's all there is to it. Great. So even though you just used fancy windows and buttons to do the same thing you could do through the command line, I hope you noticed that you can always see whatever IntelliJ is doing in the console tab, in the version control console tab. And just to reiterate that point, create a new branch on the command line, see if IntelliJ picks it up and shows it to you in the git branches overview window, and then do the very same thing from IntelliJ. So you basically just hit new branch here, create a new branch, and check the output of the console, of the version control console, and you're good to go. And then you'll have all the basics you'll need for the rest of this series. And we're gonna get into all the typical workflows a Java developer needs on a day-to-day -day basis, including managing branches, keeping them up to date, getting rid of the fear of merging or merging in general and whatnot. So let's get right after that.